right, all right, all right. Praise the Lord, everybody, everybody. Praise the Lord. We are, we are yet alive for another, another, another Wednesday. Another Wednesday that we can be blessed of the Lord. Another Wednesday we can enjoy the Word of God. Another Wednesday that we can enjoy this episode and this edition of your weekly faith connection. I'm going to check, make sure everything is going good before I get started. Get a chance for some people to uh, go ahead and turn it on. And, and, uh, and as people like to say, come on in and, you know, come on in, come on in the room. <laughs> but uh, get everybody a chance to come on in and, um, and get ready. Whatever you're doing, um, if you're at the house uh, doing things, if, you, if you're driving, turn it on don't look at it just turn it on i know i know i'm just a beautiful young man and you like to look at me but just don't look at me just drive no seriously though but if you are if you're driving don't look at me just drive amen all right okay i think we're good now what's up darnell means i, I saw you on facebook taking those pictures of yourself i saw you i saw you showing off showing off your new look <laughs> Ah, uh, God bless you, brother. God bless you. God bless you. Uh oh, Auntie's up here. Auntie way up in New York. New York, New York, uh up there in Albany, New York area. Rent Rensselaer, I think it is, right? Um and so uh God bless everybody that's coming on in and and uh and getting getting set and settled. You know, instead of instead of walking in in the church building, you're just walking in virtual in, in the virtual service. There's Miss Early. She's already you praising him already. Praise him, huh? She's she's a praiser, boy. She's a praiser. We was praising God hard Sunday, wasn't we? And uh, and so thank God for uh, for for the for the praises of God. Um, hey, we need to have the praises of God on us on our hearts at all times. We got we we are you're in for an a good I believe it's going to be a great uh, session on this evening. Um, I believe with all my heart it's going to be a great session as we um, as we get everything straightened out. Uh, as we get everything straightened out, bless you, Darnell. As we get everything straightened out, hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you to get in. Oh, I'm looking at the, I'm looking at that, I'm looking at that phone there. No, I'm looking forward to seeing you at church, Darnell. If you don't work on Sunday mornings, I want to see you in the place, man. Come on and get there. Listen, if you live in the Indianapolis area, uh, if you're right here in the greater Indianapolis area and you don't have a church home, you're looking for a church home, or uh, you could go to a church and it's like, you know what, this ain't satisfying me. This isn't doing it for me. And you were looking for a place to where you can have revival, looking for a place where the spirit of God uh, moves freely, looking for a place that believes in signs, wonders and miracles, that believe in casting out devils, that believe in laying hands on the sick and they do recover. If you are looking for a church, then you got a and you got an incurable disease. If you have if you've been diagnosed with something and uh, and they and they have no cure for it. Oh, listen, I tell you, if you make your way to Indy Harvest, we're seeing miracles. We're seeing we're seeing cancer be healed. We're seeing uh, we're seeing we're seeing uncurable diseases be healed. We're seeing God heal bodies. We're seeing God raise people up. So I want you all to take the time on a Sunday morning if you're in the Indianapolis area uh, or be like my auntie that uh, my aunt in New York that she she's she's not here in Indy. Uh, however, she makes sure she checks us out online. Uh, just like with Panchita in no in North Carolina checks us out and she makes sure she gets online and checks out the online service but if you're here in the city area if you in this area can get the Indy Harvest Church we are located we're having our Sunday morning services at 2926 East Washington Street at 11 o'clock now Sunday mornings uh, you know that's the big that's the big shebang shaboom and and boy I believe that God loves to perform and when I say God loves to perform he loves to do his work uh, play if you need a house of demonstration get the Indy Harvest again 2926 East Washington Street if you're out of town um, like my aunt is if you're out of town like Panchita is and if you're in 
New York, like uh, Aunt, or if you're in uh, in North Carolina, like uh, like Sister uh, Panchita is, then guess what? You can check us out on this very same page every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. If uh, if it's a little after 11, just know we're gonna pop up there, and you're gonna be blessed. Um, I'm Dr. Paul Thompson. I'm the head pastor of Indy Harvest. I pastor with my wife, the lovely Dr. Tara Thompson, that uh, that blesses us with praise and worship as well as with the word and um and hey the indie harvest family we look forward to seeing you um to get on out here but let's get right down to business on today i didn't put a title up there um i just i, I figured i'll just put the uh what we call it uh your weekly faith connection because during the middle of the week you go through stuff from sunday to sunday and sometimes you go through stuff by monday you know sometimes by sunday night you're getting attacked and you need your faith to be increased you need your faith to be uh to be uh connected to something that's going that's going to wire you to go forth in the name of the lord um now remember Remember, we are interactive. Sometimes uh, I, I got to get another um, system to look at certain stuff because my old phone that I use for the comments, sometimes I don't see everything. But y'all y'all comment with one another, put up this stuff up there, talk. And as I see stuff, if you have prayer requests, put it up there and go ahead and interact and be blessed. Uh oh, there's mother. Elder Thompson's up there. So listen, share this. Let somebody know we're on the air and uh, and let's do this thing. I'm going to go ahead and share this myself. Boom. I just shared it. Now, today I want to talk about fasting and praying. Today I want to talk about fasting, fasting and praying. That th Those words are, are words you don't hear much. You don't hear much about fasting and praying, just like you don't hear much about holiness. Um, you don't hear a lot of a lot of stuff about about uh, about crucifying your flesh you don't hear a lot of that a lot of times because those topics aren't as popular and those topics deals with some sacrifice those topics deal with you dealing with stuff that you don't want to have to deal with sometimes so today I want to deal with the top uh, the topic about fasting and praying um, uh, I'm just fasting and praying and um, because as a as a church we uh we don't do it all the time. I know some people celebrate uh celebrate East uh, the Resurrection, um, and they celebrate it with uh with a forty day fast, and they do it they do it during the time of Lent and everything. We don't celebrate Lent. I don't celebrate Lent. Um, uh, in the harvest, we don't celebrate Lent. Lent isn't in the it, Lent, 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 <laughs> Lent, uh, Lent is wasn't the dry. You just got to clean the trap out. But no, but, but, you know, we don't celebrate Lent. That's, uh, th look up that for you. <clears throat> excuse me. Look that up for yourself and you'll see what's up with that. But we do believe that at, at any time God honors fasting and praying. And so as we approach the resurrection day, the, the time that we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord, what we're going to do is we're going to start that uh, Monday coming up after Sunday. We're going to start a 21 day fast on this 21 day fast. We're going to be fasting. Some will do the Daniel fast. Some may just uh, based on your dietary needs, based on the type of diet you need, based on uh, based on your own life and your health and what you need, you choose what you're going to fast. I just always pray that you choose things that really is a sacrifice. Don't just say stuff like, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a fast Kool-Aid or something like that. No, no, no. Now, unless you just drink Kool-Aid all the time, don't just, don't just, don't do the, don't do the least. Don't do the least and don't do, don't be extreme and hurt your body or hurt yourself, but rather fasting. We want you to fast and do and just sacrifice something that you're going to feel for lack of better words. Um, and then a lot of times some people fast, but they don't pray, you know, they fast, but they don't pray. So, so we want to, we want to bring in fasting and praying because prayer praying has a uh, praying prayer itself has a uh, has a reward and fasting itself has a reward and um, and we want to fast and pray now um, we we know that there's some there's a scripture as a matter of fact there's a scripture I'll read a very um, there's a very uh, important oh very it's, 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 it's a very in the uh, in the in the church world this 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 scripture I'm about to read is very, very well known. And it's in Matthew, Matthew, um, 
Matthew chapter 17. Let's start there for tonight's lesson. For tonight's lesson on this session uh, of dealing with fasting and praying, let's deal with, uh, let's talk about this and let's deal with Matthew 17, 21. Father, in the name of Jesus, as I go forth in the word, I yield myself to you that your people will be blessed, that you will speak through my mind, that you will, uh, that you will think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords, that Lord, that you will get the glory in Jesus name. Amen. Um, now, uh, now, in Matthew, actually, Matthew ver, uh, chapter 17, when you look at that and you look at verse uh, verse 14 all the way down to verse 21, I'm, because I'm going to be hitting some a few scriptures today, I'm not going to do a whole lot of reading on, on everything because I'm going to hit a few scriptures. Thank you, Khadijah. Uh, there was a lunatic, the, 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 the guy who had a, a man who had a son who was a lunatic. And they brought him to the disciples and the disciples couldn't do anything. They um, they went and they 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 prayed on. They tried to do everything. They, they tried to do what they saw Jesus do. And they did all that. But nothing happened. No, you know, everything stayed the same. The son didn't get delivered. And um, and Jesus called them a faithless and a perverse generation. He asked him, how long would I have to have to be with you? He was like, how long do I have to suffer you? He like bring them to me. And so and so uh, but but they should have been able to do something about it. They should have been able to do something about that situation. Remember, even, even though Jesus did not leave the earth at that time, and even though uh, the comforter did not come, remember, remember this in Luke 10, in Luke 10, in Luke 9, remember in Matthew 10, in these scriptures here that we find Jesus was telling them and Jesus told them to go two by two and to cast out devils, to heal, to heal the sick, to, uh, to, to go forth and preach the kingdom. He told them to go forth and uh, he said, he says, I've given you authority and I've given you power to cure uh, diseases. I've given you power and authority to cast out devils. He, he says, I've given you the power and authority to do this. And so he, they, they had already been commissioned by Jesus to go forth in that type of power. They've already been commissioned by Jesus to go forth and, and, uh, and been given uh, delegated authority over the devil and to do that. But now they're in this situation and this man has the son that he brings to the, uh, the disciples and hoping that they can do something for him, but they couldn't. Now, now, now that sounds like a, the way the church is right now. The way the church is, glory, hallelujah, I didn't even know I was going to hit it like this. The, 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 the church, we're at a place that the world needs somebody, needs somebody that's going to have a relationship with God. The church, the church needs to be that, be that representative of Jesus that when people bring their problems to the church, when people bring the demons, when people bring the uh, the sick, when people bring the destitute, when people bring those that are in dire straits to the church, we are supposed to have uh, we supposed to have the power and the anointing to remove that burden and destroy that yoke. See, I, there's a lot of churches today that that um, that are in the same situation. A lot of Pentecostals, a lot of apostolic churches, a lot of denominational churches, as well as independent churches. Churches, uh, even five fold ministry churches are in the same situation like they were with this boy that was a lunatic. They were there trying to do this, but nothing was getting done. And that's what's going on in church. A lot of times we go to church and we do our performances and then we leave out the same way. We go to church and we and we have a performance. Literally, they go in there and you have a whole set whole thing. The stage is full and set where you have the you have the uh, you have the a uh, prayer you have a uh, you have the music and you have a, a preacher preaching but yet behind them there is no anointing there is no power there is no fresh move there is not nothing like that there and they go and they come in and they leave and they come in destitute they come in messed up and they leave the same way feeling like nothing has changed and that's the thing my brothers and sisters that we need to begin to change I tell you what I don't have authority over every church to change it but I I know one church that I know, I know we can change it and that's in the harvest that we are need we need to be the type of church that when someone comes in with a problem when someone comes in with a sickness a disease when someone comes in demon possessed we are supposed to have the power and the anointing to do something about that you hear me so it's important 
for us to position ourselves in these last days that we live in, not to be the not to be a faithless and a perverse church. See, the 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 many of the church, the many of the churches around, and I'm just gonna be honest with you, a lot of a lot of churches are faithless and perverse. We 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 uh we we allow the culture of the, of the world and we allow their ideologies, that their thoughts, their their uh their type of thinking to come and infiltrate our minds. And uh, and and that, and and what it, what that does is that begins to take away from truth. And instead of us preaching truth, and instead of us proclaiming truth, we begin to descent. We get desensitized, and we begin to uh, we begin to water down the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Paul said, "I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus, because the gospel it is the power of God unto salvation to the uh, to the Jew first, then to the Greek." The the thing about it is if we are ashamed of the gospel if we are not preaching the gospel then we are not going to experience the power of God whenever we preach the gospel the power is supposed to accompany it Paul says I'm not ashamed of the gospel he says I take great joy in the gospel because the gospel is the power of God so if we want to see the power of God we can't preach watered down gospel if we want to see the power of God we must begin to preach the gospel. You hear me? We must begin to preach what Jesus preached. We must begin to stand against what Jesus stood against. We must begin to preach the gospel. You remember, uh, you remember uh, in the book of Acts, the book of Acts, they preached the gospel. They didn't preach their theory. They didn't preach culture. They didn't preach. Uh, they didn't preach all this other, uh, other, you know, uh, uh, two way, five ways to be a better person. No, they preached the gospel. And when they, when people needed to be a better person, you know what they did? They, they prayed, got them delivered from demons and got them filled with the Holy Ghost. That's what they did. And see, we've been, we, we, we depend on counseling sessions, a bunch of self talks, a bunch of self-help a bunch of sit down and sit down talks that's really all it's doing is giving us a bunch of information and it's empowering us to blend in with the culture but it's not empowering us to really change the culture with the gospel when Stephen went Stephen I mean the, the deacon preached the gospel you remember Philip the evangelist he went to Samaria Philip the evangelist went to Samaria and when he went there he preached the gospel right when he preached the gospel all the all of a sudden the Bible says demons was being cast out sick bodies were being healed people that had body parts that was cut off was growing back miracles and wonders and signs was accompanying accompanying him everywhere he was going because he was preaching the gospel so when the gospel was preached the power goes forth glory to God okay that's not what I'm supposed to be talking about so they couldn't get it done Jesus rebuked them. I'm in Matthew 17. Jesus rebuked them and um, and and he told them to come to him. And uh, long, long story short, they, they asked him after he rebuked them and he cast the devil out. They asked him, why couldn't we do this? Jesus said this. Um, he said he said to him, because of your unbelief, that was the main reason why they couldn't cast him out. It was because of their unbelief, because they got so they was so caught up. They were so caught up. If you begin to um, if you begin to read this and check this out in the um, in the in the before they were trying to figure out who were going to be the greatest. They was trying to they was trying to figure out uh, different others. They was trying to, you know, trying to figure out who is the greatest. And and they're trying to figure out other they're trying to they got their mind on other things. They're, they're being distracted by the with the wrong thoughts. They're being distracted with the wrong uh, with the wrong uh, purpose. And instead of instead of them, instead of them being ready at all times to be able to minister to the to the uh, to the sick and to the demon possessed, they were they were trying to figure out who's the greatest and what type of temple should we build? Should we build one for Elijah or should we build one for uh, for Moses and everything? They was they was all off. They was off target. They was off focus. And see, one thing about fasting, I'll say I'm ahead of myself. One thing about fasting is fasting will help get you back in focus.
And so, and so Jesus, he said, because of your unbelief, but then in verse 21, the, the area I want to really hit, uh, Ma Matthew 17, 21, he says, how be it this kind cometh not out, but by, but by prayer and fasting. Now I love, I love the fact of first mentions because the, the first mentions principle is interesting because the first thing that's mentioned lets you know the priority that in the priority was, is not fasting and praying necessarily, but he says, he he says, the, uh, he says, this kind comes out by those who have a prayer life and a fasting life, those who pray and fast. Now, remember, when Jesus cast this demon out of this boy, Jesus did not say, hey, hold on from uh, go. You and the lunatic boy go home for a minute uh, for a day or two and let me go get with God and fast. No, he didn't do that. He was already prayed up. He was already fasted up. He was already he already been praying and fasting. Remember, Jesus will go into the mountain and stay there all night. He will go and stay there all night without eating or drinking anything and just commune with the father. Jesus, uh, Jesus lived a life. Now he did a 40 day fast once right before that's that we know about excuse me, in his ministry, but then you can tell and look at the pattern of Jesus. Jesus would go times where he would fast all night long and just, just pray to God. After he preached to a multitude, he would go to a solitary place, to a solitude place and just go there and be alone because he knew that the importance was that he had to stay filled up. And when you live a life of prayer and fasting. I was listening to a man of God. He's, he's home to be with the Lord now, but um, he was a great man of God. And, and he used to fast every like Tuesday. And I'm, I forget the exact days, but um, he used to fast two days a week and he would fast on a Tuesday and on a, like on a Thursday uh, or a Tuesday and Friday, something of that nature. And then when he really felt led, he would do a three day. He said he never really fast longer than three days, but he always, he, he, he fast, you know, a lot. But, um, he said he didn't do long extensive fast, uh, but um, but but he would fast three days uh, sometimes when he felt led about something and he you know he needed to, but uh, but all of a sudden he was in a meeting one day he said and God spoke to him he said uh, he said do you really want to, do you want the secret to know how to walk in this type of power all the time except uh, you know uh, do you want to know the secret to walk in uh, the type of power because he was he was he fast and prayed uh, on his fast day and um, and while he was doing that you know he says you know the anointing was always strong and everything he says and God told him uh, God starts speaking to him and says there's a you know do you want to know the secret that you can uh, you can walk in this type of anointing um, uh, with without just looking without just having specific days and times that you fast that there's a way to do this that you can walk and that you can walk in this on a continual basis and he said Lord how he says was well, he says stop limiting fasting and praying to just a couple of days a week or three days at a time he says what you need what you need to do is live a life of praying and fasting he said you need that make that a life so that you don't have to go and get prayed up for anything and get fasted up for anything that way you will always be prayed up and you will always be fasted up you will already have you will already be filled up so he began to change how he did stuff and so he would you know he would still do whenever God would call him on a, a fast he would fast and everything but he stopped fasting two days a week during the week and he started living a prayer a, a, a life of praying and fasting and so he would take times that he he would fast that a meal and he would fast a time of meal and see the thing he would do was he wouldn't just say oh I'm not eating breakfast and be up looking at TV and doing dishes or or uh, or cleaning the house but yet not not eating what he would do was uh, the time that he normally would be eating he or eat lunch or whatever he would eat he would not eat and he would just go get in the word or go get in prayer and he would take that time and begin to pray while he's fasting that meal one of this i'm giving you some good stuff already one of the things that we have done is that we we fast but we don't we don't put the time in of prayer and of, of and in the word we're not spending time that we would normally be eating spending that same time in the word now spending that same time now some people i, I remember uh, some people say well i'm fasting breakfast or i'm fasting lunch 
or some people say I'm fasting dinner. But then when they get home, they would do every they wouldn't eat, but they'll just be looking at TV. They'll be still doing this, going visiting friends. But if you are but if you are fasting dinner, then what you should be doing is when you normally would be eating dinner, you should be in the word and in prayer, getting before God, worshiping, doing something spiritual to grow yourself, to grow, to grow your spirit, man. So because because fasting and praying is where the power is, not just in fasting. Oh, listen to me, church. And so it's important that we do that. And after we do this 21 day fast, the goal is I don't call a lot of corporate fast. The reason why I don't is because we need to live a life that we live a life that we fast and pray on our own, that we should be living a life that we take time out and not eat and get before God, that we take time out and say today, I'm just, I'm not going to eat anything or I'm just going to drink some stuff and I'm just going to get before God with some things and, and make that a way of living and not just an event. And many of us, we just fast and pray based on events, but not as a life. So I want us to build this thing up and I want you to get a revelation of fasting and praying as a life, not just as a event. So Jesus said there are certain things that that will will not churn, will not change. And there's certain things that will not break. There's certain things that's going to hold on to you. There's certain things generationally. There's certain things in the spiritual realm. There's certain there's certain cycles in your life there's certain things that's going on that cannot be stopped and cannot be broken cannot be destroyed unless you begin to fast and pray or pray and fast and if you want to break generational cycles if you want to break see 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 the generational curse is already broken as you, as a believer every curse is 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 uh, is destroyed over your life because Jesus Jesus became a curse that you can have the blessing the blessing is on us. So you are blessed and not cursed. So a generational curse cannot be on your life. However, 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 there you are. However, however, the tendencies and the, the, the habits and tendencies that's on that that's on the family can still follow you in your actions. And what happens is we we are uh, we have those tendencies following us that we, we, we are not cursed because we're blessed, but those tendencies, those generations genetic traits will still try to follow us everywhere we go because the DNA of your family is more real and stronger than the DNA of God and the and the regeneration that God has done in you uh, uh, is suppressed and and you are more you're more aware and you're more uh, you're more open to the uh, to the you that's through your generations more than the you that's in Christ listen to me so so it's important that you remember that certain things uh cannot be broken certain things can't move or stop or be uh or be or be um or be uh, uh be uh annihilated unless there's some praying with some fasting you've been praying about it now you need to start fasting about it you need to, you have praying about it now you need to start moving your plate fast or something glory to god so so let's 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 see what else we can gleam into this here. See fasting, um, fasting. The Bible says the Bible lets us know in Matthew six sixteen through eighteen. Matthew six sixteen through eighteen says um, uh, says you know when you give up. I, I'm gonna read it in the in the, in a different version. When you give up eating, don't be all sad face like the hypocrites and make your face look sad and show uh, people that you've given up eating. And he says, he says, I tell you the truth, those hypocrites already have their full reward. So when you uh, give up eating or when you fasting, comb your hair and wash your face. And when people uh, and, and then people will not know that you are fasting, but your heavenly father uh, whom you whom uh, whom seeth whom can, whom you cannot see will see you and your father sees what's done in secret and he will reward you openly so there is an open reward when you fast when you fast correctly there's an open reward and the way you fast uh the way see as a hypocrite some people i remember people was under the under the condemnation of i can't let nobody know i'm fasting because you know i don't want jesus said don't tell nobody no jesus was talking about don't be going out out there trying to be self having pity and try to have between having pity and trying to blow yourself up as all that because and announcing everybody you fasting so they can think that you're so spiritual and so this and so 
anointed because if that's the what you're doing it that's your reward people saying oh grandiose and give you a hand clap he says but however let your let your heart be in this thing true and just and and, and get yourself up brush your teeth wash your face look right go by your way and, and and let and let god and let god be your reward let god reward you not uh not people reward you and so so when you're fasting that does not mean you can't you know if you go over some with some place you go someplace uh see somebody or you're doing something and they be like hey girl let's go let's go get some uh cotton candy and you fast and sweets then tell them you know you know no i'm fasting sweets right now sometimes instead of trying to be you know suspect and and trying to i'm trying not to tell nobody you, you know jesus wasn't saying don't you can't tell nobody he was saying don't be a hypocrite about it you know it's a difference being being letting people know so they won't be bringing food and certain things around you you that's a good thing that's establishing what you're doing but but um he's not talking about um not talking about it. he's talking about don't be a hypocrite about it so uh doing it for the applause and the accolades of man um that's why the sadducees and all the religious people did it um and so so fasting uh is important now watch this now i'm gonna give you some i'm gonna give you some stuff fasting gives you more time for prayer uh see you can you can use the time you normally spend eating and you can spend that time praying in Acts, in Acts chapter 13, verses 2 through 3. Acts chapter 13, verse 2 through 3. Listen to this. While they worship the Lord and fast, or while they ministered to the Lord and fast, the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me Saul, Barnabas, and Saul for the work which I called them to. Now here, while they was up there fasting and praying uh, and ministering to the Lord, when you're fasting and while you're praying, you need to spend, take that time. See, ministering to the Lord, the Bible calls it, is worshiping. It's, it's, it's going before God, lifting your hands. So in, in this fast, while we're fasting, take time to turn on some worship music and worship or no music and worship. Take time and not get before God and confess anything. Don't confess. No, give, don't get before. Sometimes, you know, stop with the confession and stop with the asking and uh, and doing all the talking to God about everything else and just and stop. Don't even intercede. Just stop and just take some time and just minister to him and just worship him. And so sometimes in the fast, you need to take time to worship God and see, watch this. When they worship the Lord, when they begin to worship, look what happens. All of a sudden, Holy Spirit begin to talk. If you want Holy Spirit to talk to you, if you need to hear Holy Spirit, this is good tonight. I'm enjoying this myself. If you need to hear Holy Spirit, you need to spend time worshiping the Lord. You need to spend time ministering unto the Lord. Even at church, we minister to each other, but we don't minister to the Lord enough. Glory to God. The more we minister to, to the Lord, the more the Holy Ghost will say. See, they minister to the Lord and the Holy Ghost said. One, uh, that's the one thing we see, that when you minister to the Lord and fast, that God begins to speak to you. The second thing we see is God started separating people for ministry. Your God will reveal your call in, uh, and can reveal your... He, I'm not saying he would. Listen, I'm saying God, has, God uh, can reveal and will reveal your call and can reveal your uh, your purpose in the time of prayer in the time of praying and fasting and this time they've got this revelation not because they said, Lord, what you call me to do, Lord? Oh, Lord, he shunned it out of my call. Oh, Lord. Oh, have your way, Lord. Oh, Lord, have your way, Lord. Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Have thine own way, Lord. Oh, we say yes to your will, Lord. And we know we, that's that type of prayer that you just, just like you just spitting out words for just to, just, just to take up some time half the time. Half, half of our praying, we just keep repeating ourselves over and over again. So that's why we got to watch it on corporate prayer and listen to what other people pray and stop praying and wasting prayer time praying what the people prayed you know before you so you know if you they already pray for the pastor you don't have to pray for them you can just add your we add our agreement about the pastor lord and going by your way and you know we, they, we already prayed about that you know even in your own time you know i hear and we and we'll repeat ourselves and sometimes in prayer we we mess up because we're trying to be detailed in our praying and uh and and and, and we're trying to search for stuff to say in the prayer and uh and it just takes time and takes the 
power and the fire away because you're starting to be intellectual instead of being uh, led by spirit. And, and, and so, so, so you say, Lord, I pray you will touch the top. I'm just using, for example, I pray God that you will touch the Thompson household and every facet of that household. And then what we do is we say, Lord, touch that finance. And we start naming every little thing. There's nothing wrong with that. But however, sometimes in trying to do all of that, you are mentally straining yourself to try to do something that actually you already covered when you said every facet of the household. And so we have to believe what we really are praying. We have to believe what we're saying when we're praying. I don't know why I'm saying this, but we have to believe that. And don't and, and you know, and God and God knows exactly what certain things mean. We don't have to read the definition to him when we pray it. So anyway, uh, that's a whole nother th subject about prayer. But uh, but that, that's a good subject about it. But in the time of worshiping, they just they God started speaking. Sometimes God does more when we do less. When God does more talking, when we do less talking, we just do some more worshiping and getting before the God, getting before God and letting him minister to us. Some people call that soaking, however you want to call it. But it's just worshiping God. Um. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Fasting demonstrates uh, the deep. Uh, the the it actually. Okay. Let me see. Let me let me hold on. Uh, fasting demonstrates and or oh, oh, really let me. Use, I'm I'm, uh, I'm gonna reword it. How I'm gonna reword it instead of try to sound all deep. Sometimes you know we want to sound deep. Uh, <laughs> fasting shows God your seriousness about something fasting shows god your sis shows god your seriousness it shows god that you're serious about a thing um it, it, it shows god that you that your uh that your desire about your desire and that you're serious enough to actually fast and pray and actually uh and actually give up some stuff for a thing it shows that um uh, i'm going i'm just going to mention joel 2 and uh 12 because actually and um, in Joel, in, in Joel, in Joel one and fourteen, the Bible talks about declare a holy fast, call a solemn assembly, and uh, and 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 summon the elders and all those who live in the land. He he began to he they, he called they they were serious about some stuff. They was ready to see God move and do some stuff. So they started calling the fast. And when you start fasting, it shows God your seriousness about the situation, about what you, about the thing that's on your heart, about the desire you're dealing with. Um, uh, so, so Joel one and fourteen. Joel one and fourteen. I said Joel, and I said Joel. Jo Joel one and fourteen. Fasting. I love this. Fasting releases God's supernatural power. Fasting releases releases God's supernatural power. You we we'll see that when we pray, the power of God is is our fast, and when we pray and, and fasting, that the that the power of God uh, goes to a whole nother level. The power of God, uh, yeah, you good. The power of God goes to a whole nother level when you fasting. Um, listen to this. Let me let me let me read let me uh, read this let me read this scripture right here. Uh Isaiah 58 and 6. Isaiah 58 and 6. God says, is not this the kind of fast that I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and to break every yoke? God says, see, he says, see, see, when, when we fast, yoke should be being destroyed. Uh, chains should be being broken. And we see that in Isaiah 58 and 6. 50 Isaiah 58 and 6 reveals that, that God wants to demonstrate his power in the midst of fasting. The power of God is released. Um, the supernatural power is released when we fast. I'm telling you, you will see, you'll see that, uh, that in, you'll see uh, many a times in the Bible that when, um, when God's people like Moses and all of them, they either, they either was, uh, trying to, um, they was seeking God about an answer. They were, um, uh, or either if they were had, uh, 
had a, had a problem and they was believing for some victory or if they were believing for a miracle or if they was, uh, or if they was just looking for, um, preparing for a battle. And, uh, and, and sometimes you'll find out that in those cases, when they were seeking God for an answer, when they was, uh, when they were going before God, believing for a miracle, believing for a, a victory in the battle, they was believing God for something, uh, serious like that. You will find out that they fast Moses, uh, um, on a fast, Moses received the Ten Commandments. Um, on a on a uh, he 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 fast uh, he fast forty days and forty nights. Um, we'll, we see that uh, the Israelites fast for the vic for uh, a miraculous victory. Now let me give you some scripture since uh, Khadijah is throwing out scripture. Good thanks, Khadijah. Um, in uh, we'll find in Exodus Exodus thirty four twenty eight Exodus thirty four twenty eight um, actually. Yeah, Exodus 34, 28, you will find that Moses received the Ten Commandments in the fast. What are you looking to receive in the fast? God can give you instructions about something in the fast. What time is it? God can tell you and show you how to do stuff while in the midst of the fast. Um, in, uh, in 2 Chronicles, in 2 Chronicles chapter 2, verses 2 through 3, 2 Chronicles chapter 2, verses 2 through 3. We find out that they right before the battle, they they uh they uh fasted because they were believing God. Jehoshaphat and them was believing God for a miraculous victory. They was believing God for a miraculous victory, and uh and 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 God showed it to them. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna get, let me get through this real fast. Uh, Daniel fasted in order to receive guidance from God. Uh, Nehemiah fasted, but uh, before beginning a major building project, before they had, before he um, went forth with his building project, he fasted. Um, Jesus uh, uh, fasted uh, for forty days and forty nights. The early church, um, they, they, many a times you'll find them fasting in the Book of Acts. Um, uh, so, so it's important to see fasting has results and fasting and, and fasting is not just something we do just to, uh, let me say like just to make God do something. Fasting is, I'm going to give you, well, I got to give you a couple more things. Fasting is you don't fast just to make God do something. Some, oh, I'm a fast so I can get the miracle. No, because it's all about your heart. You're not fasting to make God move. God already wants to move. God already desires to move. God already desires to do miracles. He already desires to, uh, to give you victory. He already desires to talk to you. The problem is our flesh. The problem is our flesh is in the way or we're in the way or something is in the way that we may not know about. And when we fast, it gets, it gets us out of the flesh and helps us understand what we need to do. And it opens us up in our spirit man so that we can hear from God because we, we are, uh, we're suppressing, suppressing our flesh. Listen to this. Um, uh, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me. I'm trying to get some other stuff. I thought I'd do better with this in my uh, in my time. I was trying to make sure, trying to make sure I didn't. Uh, I was trying to make sure I, I didn't go too long. And uh, let me let me see, see what else I want to hit. Okay, all right. Fasting. I like this. Fasting is not. It is. Let's listen. Listen, y'all. Listen to this. Fasting is not so much about food as it is about focus. That, that's a Mike Murdoch moment. Listen, saints. Listen. Fasting is not as much about food as it is about focus. Most of us focus on not eating. We make fasting about just, that's the main thing, what you're not eating. No, no, no. But in fasting, you, you can regain your focus. Fasting is not so much about food. It's the, the food thing. Okay, that's fine. That's what we abstain from. But it's about getting your focus. Got to get your focus back. That's what God told him to do. Come back. Come back to me. Come back. Repent. Get your focus back. Get your, get your priorities back. You get your life out of balance. And God's like fast so you can get your focus back. Get your flesh down. Okay. Um, uh, ooh, ooh, Lord. Uh, Fasting is not so much about saying no to the body as it is about saying yes to the spirit. See, the more you say yes to the spirit, the more you, you the more you say no to your body. By saying yes to the spirit, you automatically say no to your body.
See, so we focus on not eating, how I got how I gotta beat my body, and yes, that's what you're doing with your body. However, however, it's more about us focusing on this focusing on uh on 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 the spiritual realm and focus on our spirit man. Fasting um is not about um doing more so it's not it's not just about doing without, but it's about looking within. Fasting is not about um, doing without, but it's more so about looking within. Fasting is an outward response to an inward attitude and a cry of the soul. See, and we need to we need to fast. We need to fast because fasting is a call also as to return back to God. Joel 2 and 13 Joel 2 and 13, it lets you, it, it, that's, that's the scripture where it's letting you know that uh, fasting is about calling you back to God, calling you back to prayer, calling you back to, uh, to reading the word, calling you back to loving God, calling you back to worshiping at the house, calling you back to listening to uh, music and worship while you're driving in the word, Get calling you back. You know, sometimes we get loosey goosey and God said, no, 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 no. I need to call you back to get your priority straight. Call you back to the church. Call you back to your first love. Call you back to what's uh, important. Call you back to it because you got off. So he fast and calls you back. Glory. Hallelujah. Woo I pray y'all got something out of this real quick. Let me let me say this. Um, let me hit. Let me hit this one. One of the things that we um, that I want that we that God wanted me to say to you before what we end is that that we need to remember one of the major problems of why we don't receive of why we don't hear God properly of why we not of why we don't flow in the Holy Spirit like we should and a lot of problems we have. Is, is simply because of this right here this your flesh most of the problem is not the devil yes we get attacked things happen spiritual warfare yes okay but most of our problems in our personal life has to do with our flesh has to do with us being stubborn, has to, has to do with us having pet sins, it has to do with us not laying aside every weight, it has to do with us uh, us, um, us, uh, us giving more attention to the flesh instead of the spirit, see? But when you fast, you activate certain principles. When you fast and pray, you activate in certain principles. And one of the principles you are activating when you fast is found in Matthew 16, 24, where he says that when you want to be a disciple, you must deny yourself and follow me. It, it begins that you exercise the, the, uh, the principle of self-denial. You need to learning to deny yourself. You must learn to deny self. See, you got to see that helps you stop being selfish and start being selfless. We become too selfish to where it's all about us, to where everything is about us. And we need to get off of that because that's Lee. That's that's hindering us from receiving and getting more glory. As a matter of fact, the less of you you have, the more of Jesus you receive. See, the more the more of your flesh that uh, dies, the more you uh, you crucify those habits, those ideas, those uh the the stubbornness, the the uh the little um the all your uh, uh character flaws. The more you crucify your character issues and your character flaws the more you crucify those what happens is the more of the character of god you operate in the more you crucify the bad character in your life the more you walk in god's character the you remember john he says i must john say this the the, the here's the principle john says i must decrease that he must increase so when you fast you decreasing you, you're decreasing. 
You're decreasing in, 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 in yourself. You're decreasing. You're beating your flesh down. Your flesh wants that Pepsi and you're like, no. It wants that Coke and you're like, no. You, it, wants that, it wants that cake and you're like, no, you ain't getting that cake. No, it's prayer time. I'm over you praying, you know, because instead of you running after and just thinking about what I can't eat, you start thinking about now, let me, I can get before God. I can pray. And you start to think and you start to operate and to deny the self-denial process. And many of us don't hear that in church. Deny yourself. Deny your flesh. No, we pamper our flesh. We, 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 we love our flesh. And you must love yourself, yes. But, but we, we, just, we, just, we have so much self and fleshly love. And we, just, we, just, we, just, we focus more on the outward man. And, and this is all about uh, causing the outward man. Paul said in, um, in 1 Corinthians 5 and 31. First, sorry, no, 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 sorry. No, not, that's not the right one. 1 Corinthians 15, 31. 1 Corinthians 15, 31. Paul said, I die daily. 1 Corinthians 15, 31. Paul said, I die daily. In other words, he says, every day I'm working on myself. Mm. That's what he said. I die daily. In other words, every day I'm working on myself. Every day I'm working on my attitude. It's, you know how much glory and how much anointing, how much power we can walk in if we learn to, uh, if we learn to die daily. If we learn to every day let God start stripping stuff off of us that's not right. Woo-wee. Some of us don't let God uh, cut stuff off of us, uh, you know, maybe once a year. But what if daily, you sa- daily, daily, woo, man, you take up your cross and you do this thing daily. All right, I got to go. I want to read this scripture, 1 Corinthians um, 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. And we got to get out of here. I got to go. 1 Corinthians 9, starting at um, starting at verse 24, and we we fit, we end in this. 1 Corinthians 9, uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. One more time for Khadijah. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. Know ye not that they which run a race run all know ye not that they uh which run in a race run all but one receiveth the prize so run that you may obtain so he's talking about sports giving that analogy that you run and receive a prize so he says run that you may obtain then watch every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things now they uh, now they do it that they may obtain a corruptible crown, but we do it that we may obtain an incorruptible crown. So he says, now listen, there's a there's a prize that that uh, that the that natural athletes are going for that sprinters are going for. And they're going to and, and, and when, when they're going uh, and when they're going, they're striving and they're working hard and they, they're working towards perfection to be a master at what they do. They're working. The runners and the uh, and athletes are working to have mastery. They want mastery over this over their sport, so they can get so they can be the top at their game, so they can be the top in what they do, so they can be the top runner, the top football player, or whatever. They 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 striving for the mastery. The Bible says that they're temperate in all things. In other words, that they're disciplined, that they learn that they walk in discipline. And, and, uh, and the reason why I want to read this is because what God wants us to be the best Christians and the best believers we can be. But he says we must run to, uh, to, uh, to walk in that. We must walk in that thing, but we must go at it like the athletes do. And we must go at it and we must strive for mastery. We must begin to strive to be the best believer you can possibly be. To, be, to, be more, to walk more in the spirit than you do in the flesh. To walk more in the anointing head than you ever had before. To walk more in receiving the, uh, the harvest that God has you than you ever had before. 
before. But he said you that means you must be temperate though in all things. That means you must practice self-discipline and self-denial. He says, and we're doing it not to get some little trophy. We're doing it for an incorruptible crown. Woo! Therefore, in verse 26, he says, therefore, so run, not uncertainly. He says, so fight and not as one beaten air. He says, so don't go and just run around and just do stuff. So don't just be going and doing stuff uncertain, not knowing what you're doing. No, no, no. You know what you're doing. You striving. You're striving to be the best believer you can be. You're striving to be at the top of your spiritual game. You're striving to be super hyper, to be super sensitive, to be hyper uh, sensitive in the spirit realm. You're, 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 you're striving to cast out devils and to, and to lay hands on the sick. You're striving to go for and prophesy and to and to go forth and lay hand i mean to go forth and do uh do miracles you're 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 striving to walk in the gifts of the spirit you're striving to walk in, into another level of the word of wisdom and the word of knowledge you're, you're striving to prophesy with accuracy and and to speak with accuracy like never before you're striving to preach with a precision and with the clarity that even that that, that hasn't been heard for years and to be at the top of your game you 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 you're striving to be the best evangelist or the best singer. You're striving for that, but you must be temperate. Strive to be the top of the game in the things of God. Go for the master it, but you must be temperate in all things. That's what fasting to do. So what Paul said is this, last verse was this, but keep, but he says, but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection so he won't be a castaway. So he says in the midst of this, he says, I keep my body under. I keep my body under. I, dis I, keep, I, I stay disciplined and I stay focused and keep my body under so I won't be a castaway. Now, the thing about it is this. The whole goal for fasting is not just to have one time of fasting where we woo, feel the power of God and go by way, but it's to develop a pattern or a life to where we are praying, to where we are people of prayer and fasting. So starting Monday, we're going to practice this spiritual discipline called fasting and we're going to pray and we're going to implement prayer and fasting and we're going to see God move supernaturally. So figure out what you believe in God for personally, figure out what you want God to do in your life. And other than that, enter into the fast excited, enter into it, excited about what God is going to do. Enter it and say, God, I want you to just change me. I want you to work on me and let him work on you and let him discipline you and let him crucify that flesh because it's the flesh that's been getting in the way. And it's time to go for the mastery. It's time for us to be the best church we can be, be the best Christians we can be to go forth in the name of the Lord. And we're going to kick it off by fasting and praying and believe God. Glory to God. I pray God got you. I pray God blessed you. I pray you got something out of this. We got to go. Glory to God. The giving information partners and friends are, is on the screen on this Wednesday. I want you to sow your seed. I want you to tithe your tithe and sow your seed and be blessed in the name of the Lord. Uh, listen, God, God, uh, God is honoring, um, honoring our, our sacrifice as we, as we go. Well, first of all, father, I thank you for the word. I pray God that the word fell on good ground and bring forth a hundredfold in Jesus name. Amen. Um, now we, we're seeing, we seeing, uh, we're seeing God open up some doors. I gave a word about God opening up some things and breakthroughs, bonanzas, windfalls, and 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 there were some things that was stuck in the spirit, if you will, some things that was that that some resistance going on about some things in the spiritual realm, and um, I didn't realize I was just talking about myself and my family also uh, about some stuff I wasn't even thinking about it, but just yesterday some things broke through that my wife was tell told me about some things broke through and uh, that 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 had everything to do with that word I gave. That word I gave about um, God's doing breakthrough and the word I gave about how um, some certain things that the enemy has been resisting and been uh, fighting against some things about to come through and some things came through for us. Some things that there's been a fight. It came through for us. So so um, so listen. 
So listen, I want you tonight to give and to believe and to believe God for uh, for for those things that you've been believing God for. I want you to believe God that some things are going to break through that resistance that you've been going through. Some of y'all been having resistance in some area, whatever it may be. And uh, and and it's been one of the things where you've been like, OK, I need where's the approval. You're looking for your approval letter. God says you are approved. God says you are approved. God says you are approved. I want you to listen today to, to sow your seed because go sow your seed and believe God for your approval. That's one thing I just heard in my spirit. God says he's given he's giving approvals. Uh, yes, he's given approvals. So so receive that in the name of the Lord. The, the, one more time, the giving information is on the screen and uh, go ahead and get ready to give and be blessed. I'm going to get ready to pray over the offering and uh, and, and we're going to have a you're going to have a great rest of your evening. So I want you all to sow and be a blessing in the name of the Lord. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm believing God for some miraculous stuff to happen during this fast. y'all. I'm believing God for some stuff to happen like never before. And so I want you all to believe with me and believe for some great and powerful things as you give your offering as you set yourself to give declare this with me i am blessed declare it with me i am blessed one more time declare say i am blessed so come on say my god supplies all my needs go ahead yeah say my needs are met yeah i come on say i am abundantly supplied yeah say god i believe you you are my source. You are my supply. And I lay hold of my harvest in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, right now, I pray for my brother. I pray for my sister. I pray for them as they get ready to give their offering on tonight. Father, I pray, God, for the approve. I pray for the open door to come. I pray, Lord, that the approval will show up quickly. I pray, Lord, that every barrier will be removed in the name of Jesus. Everything will be moved out of the way and that the approval and that everything will break through and come through speedily in the name of Jesus. I pray you'll send now prosperity. Do it now, God, speedily in the name of Jesus and God I give you praise God for, for that we are blessed that we are rich that we are anointed in our finances and Lord I thank you Lord we as in the harvest we thank you for our building we thank you for our resources we thank you that we have more than enough thank you Lord that we are rich that we are abundantly supplied in the name of Jesus I declare no lack over in the harvest and his partners I declare no lack over you uh, that's given and so on tonight I declare no no lack in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for no lack in Jesus' name. I speak the blessing over your finances and I add my agreement with you in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you for your time tonight. God bless y'all from New York to uh, to uh, to Cal. I mean, I was in California, but from New York to Charlotte, North Carolina, to Indianapolis, to Columbus, Ohio, uh, to Tennessee, to everywhere, to where everybody is on the night. And for all that will see this, thank you for your time. God bless you. Remember, remember, remember that we are united. We are rich and we are healed. Glory to God. And listen, y'all, I'm telling you you make sure you connect on tomorrow i'll be doing it again on the partner page i'll be list i'll be talking again and giving uh, inspiration so connect stay connected go to the facebook page go to paul and tar thompson uh i mean go to paul and tar thompson on the youtube page like it subscribe it and share it and help us out glory to god and just keep on staying connected and st keep on bl being a blessing in the name of the lord invite work right now start working on inviting people to get to church work on it start working on it and bring somebody with you to get blessed on this sunday well god bless y'all thank y'all for your giving thank you for your sowing thank you for your time you are blessed and you are anointed and god has called us to live one type of life and that is the abundant life salute